Well, today's story is about a great chef. And any real cook will tell you that they prefer to cook with gas. They like the control, the heat, and the consistency of the gas flame. Well, what do you do if you live out here in the suburbs where there's no natural gas out on the street? You have no other choice but to convert to propane. And that's our story today. So, Denise, what is wrong with an electric stove? Well, the problem, Rich, is that I have to live with the stove for the last 12 years. The issue is that you just can't control the heat. Well, there's knobs right here. What do you mean? <laughs> yes, I know. But typically what happens, for example, when you're sautéing on the top of the stove, yeah. you literally have to pick up the sauté pan, put it on a back cooler burner, and wait for the heat to come down. Because even when you turn the knob down, the burner doesn't cool off. Correct. So what do you like to cook? Well, I love Italian food. So Fra Diablo. Puntanesca. Shrimp scampi. So maybe you're going to cook something a little later? Absolutely. All right, then we'll, let's get you a new stove. Today we're going to take this electric stove out of here and put a propane or gas-fired stove in. That's the easy part. We also have to put a fuel tank outside, run new gas lines inside the building, and for that we're going to need a little bit of help. You ready to get started? Absolutely. All right. Unlike natural gas, which will come in through a pipe from the street, we need to actually store propane on site in a tank. And for that, we call the local propane supplier. Brian Russo is going to help us out today. Hey, Brian. How you doing? So why'd you pick this side for the tank? We have to consider aesthetics. So what you mean by that, I think, is that we can kind of hide it on this side, right? You've already got bushes here. It's really backstage, and this is where the air conditioning condensers are. So that's OK for you? That would be fine. All right. What are some of the rules about placing it here? Another reason would be to minimize the run to the stove. Okay, so right behind this wall is a kitchen, so we'd have the least amount of piping inside the building. That's correct. Any code issues? One of the codes requires you to be 10 feet from any source of ignition. All right, so source of ignition would be electricity, so that again is this air conditioning condenser. We wouldn't want any chance of a spark. It looks like we're about 10 feet, right? That's correct. Okay, what other issues? Another code requires you to be 3 feet from any opening into a building. Well, that looks closer than 3 feet, though, Brian. Well, it is, but the fire department has given us special permission to seal off the window. Okay, so you're going to lose a window, Denise. Is that all right? You want the shrimp scampi tonight. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> all right, how about on this side? You got what? Well, you got a window that looks far enough away. Are you worried about the dry vent here? The dry vent's also three feet. Okay, so good. So this is where the tank's going. What else have we got to do now? Let's go get rid of that old electric range. All right. Denise, just grab that cardboard and stick it there. We're going to protect the floor. All right, Brian, let's lift it straight up. All right. One more time, let's get it up and on. All right, just unplug it. There you go. Now tip it back to me, Brian. All right. Denise, say goodbye to your stove. Goodbye, electric stove. All right, Denise, here is the new stove you picked out. I love it. And it has two ovens, I noticed. Yes, and on the bottom, I have a regular oven and a convection oven. Right, now a convection oven has a fan in it to move the heat around and cook a lot quicker. Correct. And on the top, I have another regular oven. It's narrow, perfect for lasagna. Absolutely. All right, well, we got to get gas to this thing. And there's a very specific place that the gas pipe has to run. It has to be between this point and this point, and only in this narrow gap. If we ran the gas pipe up here, it would mean that the stove would sit too far out into the room. It wouldn't be able to go back flush. So now we just got to transfer a measurement and drill a pilot hole where the gas pipe has to come up. All right, just make a mark on the floor. And drill a pilot hole. Brian, how's that look? OK, it looks good. All right, now I can drill the right size hole with a spade bit. Now I'm going to drill a pilot hole for the gas line that runs out to the tank. All right. OK, we're clear. Okay, Brian, I got it. All right. Now, we are running the gas piping in this building using this. This is black steel pipe. It's got threads on it. And we have to run it from right here. This is the hole that we drilled behind the stove up in the kitchen. And the line has to come from here and connect out to the tank. Now, the tank is sitting out here behind this wall. You can see the window. It would be great if we could just come right across the ceiling, but we can't. Look at this. The ductwork is so close to the joist that we can't go any farther than this, so we've got to turn 90 degrees and go out through the back of the building. 
On this project, we're actually gonna cut and thread some of the pipe on site. I'm gonna use a power drive to do this. All right, now a power drive is a pipe vise right here connected to a motor. It doesn't actually cut the pipe, it just spins the pipe so it can be cut. To cut it, he's using a steel pipe cutter. It has a couple of rollers and a cutting wheel at the top. So he's just tightening the knob at the end to just compress it and the blade cuts it. A lot easier than a hacksaw. So now he's reaming the pipe, which removes any burrs and actually machines the inside of the pipe. So now with the power drive still spinning, he can now thread his pipe. A little bit of oil on the pipe. Then he takes a three quarter inch die stock. It has a series of teeth, which will actually remove the steel and leave a thread. He wants to be sure to put a little bit of oil on just to lubricate those threads and to cool it off. So the die stock is actually creating threads and screwing the die stock right onto the pipe. And that's about the right thickness right there. Beautiful. Okay, so we have our two long pieces cut. This one comes from the range over to this corner, and this one comes from the tank outside. Now to join them, I'm going to use some pipe joint compound that's made for gas. Okay, I'm going to apply it to the threads. Now catch the thread. Okay. And two wrenches and I'll tighten it up. That should do it. All right, with all the threaded connections made, we just need to put in our final hanger. Okay, now we've run this size pipe, it's three quarter inch, to this point you see that there's a T. Now on this branch, this is for any potential future use of gas, say you want to add a gas water heater or something in the future. Great. And this branch goes up to our new gas stove. All right, Denise, the gas pipe is finally up to the kitchen. You can see we come up through the floor and there's an elbow. What is that blue valve for? Well, that's actually a service valve, and that's really important. You want to have one at every gas appliance. And Brian's also putting a cap in the end of that shutoff valve so we're sure that the system is sealed. Now we can do a test of the connections. Well, it looks like the outside connections are done. Yeah, it leaves the building right here, comes down along the building. I'm very glad to see that they've done this. Spray painted this outside pipe with rust-proof paint so it won't rust. The pipe transitions to copper. Now the copper line comes up to the top of the tank, but it's not connected to the tank yet. It's actually connected to a pressure gauge. That's because we have to do a pressure test. Now how much are you going to pump that up? Three pounds. Now how long are you going to let that sit? For ten minutes. All right, so Denise, what we're looking for is this gauge to stay right where it is. If there was the slightest leak inside on a fitting, that gauge would drop. What we'll do is we'll call the local plumbing and gas inspector to come by and verify it too. So how much will this tank hold? Well, this tank is good for about 48 gallons of propane, and that's going to last the mere mortal cook probably a year. But I will predict that the propane company will have to come back a couple times a year for you, but they'll do it automatically. Sounds great. Okay. Now, we've also installed this. It's an anti-tip bracket. It hooks to the bottom of the stove and prevents that stove from ever tipping forward, so that's an important safety feature. Now, it's time for the stove. And our final connection. All right. All right, so he's just going to make that connection hand tight at first, and then snug it up with a couple of wrenches. Now we just got to plug it in, and we're ready to go. Now we just got to get you out of there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bad. All right, let's just be careful. Get that. All right, let's just slide it straight in. Careful, lift it off the cardboard. I think we're into the bracket. All right, let's get the chef. With the stove connected, we did one more final test, a leak test, which verified that the stainless steel connector and the stove itself didn't leak. And that all checked out fine. Absolutely. All right, bring the grate in, Denise. Ready for the test? Absolutely. And turn the knob counterclockwise the other way. Yep. You can hear the spark. Yeah, do the other one. 
All right, well, Madam Chef, officially, you are cooking with gas. That's great. Thank you, guys. <laughs>